All right, guys, how is it going? I'm the Crown Fiend, and today we're doing What If Deku Had a Kaiju Quirk Part 2. So, I know you guys are super excited for this Kaiju Month raging on, but I'm gonna take my time with this series. So, I promised you guys that Demi Fiend is going to be tomorrow, and just a heads up, it will be the finale to Demi Fiend because a lot of stuff is actually going to happen and it's going to you know really just set the story off to its proper conclusion as really that is how it's going to be magneto is also ending tomorrow so the only series that i will have going after tomorrow is this one and green goblin and Green Goblin is nearing its end as well. It'll probably be ended by part four because there's really not a whole lot more you can do with that. So yeah, that's everything's on track to end this coming up week. So I hope you guys are ready for that because what that's going to set up for is Persona 4 Golden. Part one, as soon as I get down to having one what if, like, we're just gonna start up Persona 4 Golden, part one, let's play. So I hope you guys are ready for that as well, because that will be something that is going to happen, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. I hope you, you, I hope you guys will have a lot of fun with that as well. And yeah, so I'm gonna clear up a few things that's going to be going around here first. So, number one, Deku is not immortal. He can adapt from near-death experiences, but if something kills him, then that's it. He can't really come back from being killed. If his quirk is destroyed, then, you know, he's a normal human again. He can be killed again. There's a lot of ways that Deku can be defeated. And it just takes like someone smarter. But also like if someone with a stronger kaiju ability comes around and just nearly kills Deku, like Melissa almost did, then of course Deku, before he can fully heal, like they could still kill him. And like Deku would still be dead. So Deku is not completely invincible. As you know, I want you guys to take a guess at what kaijus Melissa actually has DNA inside of her. Now Deku's is really going to be like just something I came up with by myself really I just thought that you know adapting would be a pretty cool idea and I did take inspiration from Doomsday from DC and that's how we got Deku but guess down in the comment sections below which two kaijus do you think Melissa is a combination of? Oh, I can't wait to see what you guys comment. Now then, with where we last left off the recap, it's just that, you know, Deku, you know, has a lot of memories that are lost to him, blocked off, he can't access. He nearly killed Bakugo with a single punch as he was scolded for that and pretty much Aizawa's taken a very close look after Deku as he got just completely dominated hero you know points all throughout like the quirk assessment like he's top of the class and him and Momo are actually friends from their last year of middle school together so Yes, but Deku is not that interested in girls his own age. He's more interested in older women. So that's going to come into play this episode. Hope you guys will enjoy this episode. And as always, if you do, appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you never miss an upload or notification as this will be another premiere. So I hope you guys will enjoy. Here we go. So where we pick up is right after school on the day where 
you know, Deku just dominated in the quirk assessment. As he's waiting for Melissa outside the school gate, as Melissa says to Deku that she's actually got a date today and that she can't walk home with him. As Deku's like, what? You have a date? Who are you dating? As she just says, butt out of your big sister's business and go on. As Deku's just like, no, I want to meet your boyfriend. As she's like, don't worry, you'll meet him soon enough, but just let me have my date and you go off and it wouldn't hurt for you to potentially ask someone out on a date yourself, you know. As Deku's just like, fine. So he leaves. As he starts walking and he notices that there's someone actually crying in an alley as you know he looks and he sees this woman in a hero costume as he says uh, are you all right as she just turns and looks and sees Deku and since Deku's not really wearing his you know school uniform anymore since he just threw it in his bag he's really just wearing a muscle shirt and his school pants and some high tops that's literally all he's wearing and Deku does have a lot longer hair so he does have his hair tied up like Aaron does in the latest season of Attack on Titan. So that's Deku's style. He has like piercings in his ears as well. So Deku's pretty much not looking like a high school student at the moment. As she just says, oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. As Deku looks at her and he's just like, you don't seem too fine. As he says, is that your mask? As he points down to the ground and she's like, yeah, that's my mask. I just crying. I didn't know hero work would be this hard. But to be honest, like, I wasn't able to save somebody today. And I'm taking it pretty hard. It was a little girl. She was in a burning building. And I wasn't any good at getting in there, and I couldn't save her. She died. As Deku sits down beside her and says, You know, you can't save everyone. Trust me, I know. I know how that feels. You're not going to always be able to save every single person, but... You can save those that you can and put forth some extra effort into your day each and every day to make it up to those that you can't. Oddly enough, we live in a world where good and evil is pretty unbalanced. Right now we have overwhelming good in Japan, but usually the universe has a funny way up balancing itself back out with usually leaning more towards the opposite force before it balances it back out again. And she looks at Deku and just says, Can I know your name? As he says, Oh, Izuku Shield. Nice to meet you. May I know yours? As she says, Oh, um, yeah. My name is Yu Takeyama. It's a pleasure to meet you. As Deku says, pleasure's all mine. But you really shouldn't be crying in an alleyway like this. It's not really safe. As she just says, oh, and what makes you think that you know everything about me? As Deku says, well, judging from your costume, you're also Mount Lady. As she says, Oh, so you think that just because you know I'm a pro hero that, you know, you're just automatically gonna know what's best for me? And Deku's like, no, no, it's not that. It's just that you're in an emotional state at the moment. A smart villain would be able to really manipulate you and pick you apart. 
It's not really safe for you to be here in this condition. Can I escort you home or something? As she says, how old are you, kid? As Deku says, I'm 16. And yeah, Deku's going to be 16 in this. Since I said that Melissa is like a year older than him, she's 17. So, yeah. Anyway, so... Deku's just like... So? Is that a yes or a no? And she says... Sure, you can walk me home. As she says, but I'm gonna get changed first. So, Deku, you know, walks her to where she works at. She goes in there, gets changed, and she comes out and... She's in, you know, a jacket with a fur, you know, collar. She's wearing a light pink shirt, some blue jean pants, and some high heels as Deku's just walking with her. And once again, Deku's not actually looking his age, so... And she can tell, like, his muscle definition is really solid. His, you know, piercings look nice as she's just admiring Deku as she is thinking that he is pretty handsome overall as Deku's just like, hmm, what, I catch your eye or something? And she just says, as if. So Deku walks her all the way to her train station as she gets on the train to go home and Deku says, well, I'm this way, so... I'll be seeing you around. And she's like, wait, give me your number. And Deku's like, why do you want my number? And she's like, well, if there's ever a chance for you to, you know, intern somewhere, I'd like to know so I could put out an offer. And Deku's like, oh, okay, sure. So he gives her his number, which she's just like, completely bullshitted him into giving to her because like she just wants to have his number to text him not as Mount Lady but as you so Deku just says it's nice getting your number even though you kind of tricked me into it as she's like what do you mean as Deku says I already know full well that wasn't your actual intention I'm smart enough to realize that, but I also know when to play along. As she kind of blushes as the train door shuts before she can say anything else, and Deku walks home. As he gets to his house and he's just chilling, as David comes in and says, Hey, where's your sister? As Deku said, oh, um, Melissa's out on a date, Dad. And David's like, what, a, a date? She's out on a date. As Deku says, yeah, she won't let me meet her boyfriend. As David's just like, we'll have to have a talk with your sister when she gets home. And Deku's like, agreed. But th this is the first time that David and Deku are able to have some one-on-one -on -one time. So... David takes this as the time to really just give Deku some fatherly talks and all that. As David is talking to Deku and telling him everything that he needs to know as a man, you know, giving him the talk with the birds and the bees, is Deku feels very awkward about all this, but at the same time, David is explaining to Deku that they've never had an opportunity to have these talks before, so it's best to get them out of the way, and then they can talk about whatever. And Deku's just like, fine, I'll listen to this, just let, let's get it over with. So they get all that awkwardness out of the way, and they decide that they want to watch a movie. David orders them a pizza, as they split a pizza, and David's drinking a beer, Deku's drinking some soda, and they're just chilling on the couch watching some action movies as they just watch movies together until they both just pass out. They, you know, David's exhausted from all of the experiments reporting to the council. 
and all of that stuff. And Deku's exhausted from school, dealing with Mount Lady, all that stuff too. So he's pretty much just drained. As pretty much when Melissa comes home, she finds Deku and David just passed out on the couch with an empty pizza box, an empty beer bottle, and Deku's cup empty, just having some ice left in it. And pretty much she cleans up everything, leaves an angry note on the table saying she's not here to clean up after them. If they're going to pass out, at least clean up after themselves. She turns off the TV and she heads to the shower where she takes a shower as that's when Deku wakes up. He sees the note and he's like, ah, oh, she's home. So he finishes cleaning up around the house as he's waiting for a shower as Melissa walks out and sees Deku awake and she's just like, oh, I didn't expect you to be awake and Deku's just like, yeah, I can't sleep on a couch for a really long time, so besides, I also need a shower. You leave me any hot water? As she says, oh, yeah. So Deku just walks in there as she notices something's a little bit off about Deku. He's more, you know, uh, combative at the moment. So she's just like wonder what's going on as Deku gets into the shower as he just woke up from a nightmare and it's a nightmare that has to do with him and Inko as the hot water pours onto him as Deku cries in the shower his fist right against the wall he's not wanting to make any noise to wake up David or startle Melissa because he doesn't want to have to talk to them about this but he just keeps having the what he considers a nightmare of him slamming his fist through Inko's chest as he doesn't know why but he doesn't even recognize that fist is him but it's from his perspective it has to be him as he's just like crying in the shower and he just mutters I'm sorry I'm sorry mom I'm so sorry as he just sits there in the shower for a good 30 minutes as he gets out and the whole house is just steamed as Deku uses the cover of the steam to just get to his room as he checks his phone, as he notices he has a text from you, he opens it and she says, Thanks for being there for me today. It really meant a lot. As Deku just texts her back, No problem. Maybe we should go out to eat sometime. As he sends the text, as he puts his phone on the charger, he's about to lay in bed, he's just wearing some boxers, as he gets a text back as he checks and she says sure anytime with a little winky face at the end of it as Deku is just like oh cool as he doesn't choose to respond to it right away so he just puts it on his nightstand and goes to sleep as he tries to he gets a little bit of decent sleep before he's woken up right before his alarm goes off by another nightmare. The same one with him and Inko. As Deku's just like, this has got to stop. But why does it feel so real? And why is this a reoccurring thing? And he gets up and he notices he's in a cold sweat. So he takes another shower, he puts on deodorant as he throws on his school uniform and he just puts his hair down and not wanting to show off his piercings at school so he keeps his hair down. Throws on some headphones, listens to music as he texts Mount Lady back saying that you know whenever she wants to 
as he sends her the text. Uh, he puts his phone in his pocket, jams onto the music, as he decides that he's going to cook breakfast. As he cooks eggs, bacon, sausage for, you know, David and Melissa, because they kind of do like that more than rice and stuff. <laughs> Especially David. So, Deku's breakfast actually consists of an egg over rice as he just prefers that as he feels like it's more you know easy for him to digest and with a lot on his mind it's not going to really be something that, that he has to focus too hard on eating so he starts eating as he just leaves their place there he finishes eating he gets a shot of water in his mouth as he decides that he's gonna go ahead and go for a walk so he leaves the house early and while he's walking around he's just looking the sun's not even up yet and he's walking to school but he decides to sit up this park that he comes across he sits there for a minute and that's when he notices somebody else just somebody that's there severe burns all over their body as he looks at them and notices the dark black hair as he walks over there and says you come here often as the man just looks up at Deku and says pretty much it's a good place to clear my mind why what's up as Deku's just like nothing just noticed your burns you all right and the guy says oh these are old wounds do they bother you and he's like not really i have wounds of my own just not all visible as the guy says join the club same here so deku sits down as him and the man start talking as he asks the man his name. He says, the name's Dobby. What's yours? He says, Izuku. And so, basically, they start having a chat about all of the things that are wrong in the world, what should be changed, what should be fixed, as Deku notices that him and this guy actually have a lot in common. Like, False heroes are a problem that need to be removed. You know, people who abuse their family shouldn't be able to continue being a hero. All of that stuff. As Deku looks at the time and says, he's got to get going. As Dobby says, yeah, sure, take care. As he tells Deku he'll be seeing him around. So, Deku decides to head to school. He gets there as Melissa... She's already at the gate as she notices Deku wasn't at the gate when she got there because when she woke up, she just hurried up, ate, threw her clothes on, and went out the door to look for Deku since he didn't leave a note or anything. As Deku gets there and she says, Hey, you alright? As Deku looks at her and says, yeah, I'm alright. Why? You okay? And she's like, yeah, you just left without having a note saying where you were going or anything. And Deku says that he just needed some air. He had a nightmare and, well, he was up from that point, point forward. As she says, okay. So, she lets it go. Deku walks. And Melissa walks and... Deku gets to his class, he tells Melissa by as he walks in, and Momo says, oh, hey, Izuku, as Deku says, oh, hey, Momo, as they start chatting it up, as, you know, Aizawa, he's there, as he tells them, you know, sit down and all that, so, next few days go by, as nothing really happens, Deku ends up going out to eat with you whenever she gets off work one day 
as they start chatting it up and you know Deku he starts seeing use charm more and more as he's just looking at her and she actually starts to develop some feelings for Deku as well as the two continually have this little flirting thing going back and forth and you know David has no clue that's actually happening neither does Melissa and nobody on Mount Lady's side knows that she's talking to Deku at all and you know she next day happens and she has an interview and Deku's listening to the interview in class as they ask her if she's single and you says hmm well technically I am single as Deku feels his stomach tighten up a little bit when he hears that and she says but I've already got my eye on somebody and that makes Deku loosen up a little bit more and he actually smiles a bit when he hears that but he's covering up his mouth so nobody can really tell that he's smiling and with his you know hair being so long it hides his earphones perfectly since he has those Bluetooth earbuds in his ears it's honestly just super easy and convenient for him to hide them and having his phone in his pocket just play it makes it so much easier for him so yeah as basically he basically asks to go use the restroom as he basically sends her a text saying listen to your interview interesting things you said about the relationship side of things as before Deku can even like put his phone away he gets a text back as she says well I'm just waiting to be asked as Deku's like oh is that so hmm. give it a little bit of time as she says I am because if you ask me now I tell you no take it slow kiddo as Deku's just like hey I ain't no kid and she just texts him back saying, I know. So, Deku just puts his phone away as he splashes water on his face, but that's when he just has this massive headache as he's gripping the sink and he breaks it. As water starts spewing everywhere, as Deku just screams out in pain. Aizawa and Vlad run out of their classrooms and into the men's bathroom to see Deku holding his head so tightly in pain, tears running down his face as he says, make it stop, as basically like they rush him to the nurse's office. Recovery girl can't do anything for Deku at all, like David is called, Melissa's called down there as like literally Deku's in so much pain that he's crying constantly and it won't stop his eyes are flashing different colors as David's just mortified when he sees Deku's you know pupils changing from their normal emerald green to a light turquoise his the white part of his eyes flashing between white and black as Deku says what's happening to me has basically David says it's gonna be alright son it's gonna be okay we're, we're gonna get you help it'll all be alright just calm down calm down has Aizawa he demands an answer on what's happening to his student and David says it's probably suppressed memories trying to resurface I knew this was going to happen one day or later. Ah, uh, damn it. Going to have to resuppress them. As I always say, like, resuppress them. What, so this can happen again at a later date? Why not just let the memories come? As basically David says, I don't have the time or patience to deal with arguing this about you. You're not his legal guardian. I am. We're resuppressing his memories. And that's when Vlad grabs David and says, no, you're not. And that's when Melissa actually steps up. She grabs Vlad's arm and breaks it. And she says, 
You will never touch my father like that again. As she knees him right in the face, fracturing his skull. As Vlad is on the ground in a lot of pain at this point. As Aizawa just says, easy there. As he erases her quirk. But that doesn't really help him considering Melissa's a master hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Even on par with Aizawa. As, like, even that, like, her brute strength alone is, like, closely there to Deku. Deku has more brute strength than her, but, like, Melissa's agility, her acrobatic skills, like, all of that gives her a huge edge over Aizawa as, like, she says, are you going to back down or are you going to fight us on this? As basically Aizawa just says, this is ridiculous. And that's when All Might comes in there and he says, stand down both of you. As he looks at David and David says, All Might. As he asks Aizawa to leave the room as Recovery Girl, you know, heals Vlad and he leaves the room as well. As All Might closes the door and says, David, what the hell's going on? As David says, this kid has suppressed memories that need to be resuppressed. Like, they're trying to resurface. And if he remembers this, there's no telling how he's going to react. They could have him, you know, targeted for elimination. And then Melissa would be next. Like, I can't run this risk right now until we're in a controlled area where I can mitigate all the risk let him go wild and get it out of his system we cannot allow him to just do anything with his mind right now as Hall Knight says what do you mean they'll have him targeted for elimination who is they what did you get yourself into David as David says, don't you go there with me, Toshinari. As All Might is taken aback, as he says, you have no idea what I've had to sacrifice. You've had no idea the hell I've seen. And I did it for her. I did it for my daughter. The same reason why this young man's mother did it for him to give them a chance at having a life to give them a chance at not being quirkless true we may have made mistakes along the way but we've paid for our sins that boy's mother's not here anymore and I'm not going to tell him the reason why as they it is going on. Deku's hearing all this as he says, What do you mean not going to tell me? You already told me the reason what happened. As David says, That's that's right. I, I forgot. As Deku's like, You're lying to me. You're lying. Tell me the truth, David. As David looks at Melissa and Melissa says, She can't do anything to him. They, they could fight, but eventually Melissa would lose. And Deku, he starts flashing more frequently as it's staying longer on the turquoise color than it is the normal green. And that's when it happens. And that's when the memory comes flashing back to him. The full unlocked memory of when his mother died. When... Deku's kaiju form is fully unlocked as he transforms into it as he's just like no no I know what happened I killed my mother why why did I kill my mother answer me David answer me as basically David is looking at Deku and he says, I won't tell you. 
Deku lunges at him as Melissa catches his arm and spins him around, throwing him right out the building as Deku lands in the courtyard of UA. As he's immediately running right back towards that hole, he jumps up there as All Might tackles him down and saying, you need to calm down. As Deku says, calm left when he kept the truth from me. Knowing that I killed my mother all these years and he hid that from me. As All Might says, we'll get to the bottom of this, but I need you to calm down. As Deku says, you just don't listen. I'm all out of calm. As Melissa jumps down there. As she says, I don't want to fight you. You're my brother. As Deku says, am I? Or is that just some lie used to control me? What did you do to my head? As... Melissa says this is something that needs to be thought through you can't just keep doing this and that's when Deku charges at Melissa as Melissa meets him head-on as the two clash a shockwave is enough to send All Might flying back a few feet All Might realizes that with his injury there's no way he can take this kid on not by himself. So while Melissa has him held, All Might rushes Deku and slams his fist as hard as he can right into Deku's side. Deku yells out in pain as he looks at All Might as he throws Melissa into him, sending them both flying back and into the gate of UA. As Nesu's rushing down there as he demands to know what the fuck is going on has recovery girl was being the only one in there besides david and david doesn't want to tell them anything recovery girl tells them everything as david is looked at with utter disgust from aizawa vlad nezu recovery girl as all might's down there fighting for his life with melissa against deku who's gone berserk as Deku is beginning to be bombarded by heroes back and forth. And that's when all of UA's teachers are there fighting their heart out against Deku. As Deku's slowly getting bombarded, but he's adapting to all their powers, all their abilities. As he sends out a massive punch right into the earth shattering it, disrupting everyone's location as they realize there's no way in hell to stop this guy. And that's when Momo looks out the window and she sees what Deku's doing as she just thinks it's a monster but then she sees the look in its eyes. She's seen that look exactly in Deku's eyes this morning. She rushes out there as she yells for Deku to come to his senses as Deku sees her as he hesitates. It's his first friend that he's ever made. As Momo says, just calm down. As Deku says, I'm so tired of being lied to, manipulated. Why? As Momo says, I don't know, just Calm down, please. Don't turn yourself into a villain. Not here and not like this. You're better than this. And that's when Deku just deforms as Aizawa erases his quirk. Deku just hits the ground from exhaustion. And he passes out. And David is arrested by the police and brought in for questioning. Melissa is given a very stern talking to, but 
it was seen as defense of her family in her case so she's just off with a warning as she's like right there at the hospital with Deku and the whole reason why Deku's in the hospital is that it's been five hours and he hasn't woken up they think he may have fell into a coma but as more tests are being done on him like he's just not in a coma he's just passed out from pure exhaustion he could be out for a day at the very least so Deku is just asleep and he's finally letting his body rest fully and completely without having any nightmares to wake him up as you know Melissa goes home and she's having to stay home and watch after Deku so her boyfriend is bringing her classwork over there to her and comment down below who do you think Melissa's dating the first person to get it right gets their comment pinned so I hope you guys can guess it but pretty much like she just tells him thank you and he tells her no problem but he's got to get going so he heads on out as Melissa does her schoolwork watches some TV and she's really just thinking how is she going to explain everything that Deku went through like her father is still being held by the police and all of that so you know Deku does eventually wake up a day later and he's pretty much calmed down but he still remembers everything and he's looking around as Melissa's awake and she just drops the pitcher of, of juice that she actually had as the glass goes everywhere and she rushes over there and hugs Deku and says I'm so glad you're awake you had me so worried as Deku says yeah thanks sis as she says you still willing to call me your sister and Deku says you've never stopped being my sister but I don't know if I can trust David ever again and she says yeah about that we're pretty much on our own now he's been arrested as for his past crimes have been you know surfaced so we're pretty much on our own and that's when they have a knock at the door as Deku opens up the door and they see this very scrawny man there with a police officer and they say please come in so they come in as basically the man tells them that his name is Toshinori Yagi as basically Deku's like oh, hold on Toshinori All Might? as All Might just says yes it is I All Might and basically Namasa is explaining to them that All Might has decided to take full custody of them starting today since David is in jail all his parental rights have been suspended meaning that these two kids are now in All Might's direct care meaning All Might is now their legal guardian as All Might says that if you want you guys can come live with me it's a bigger area you guys can have a lot more space and all of that as they agree so they stay home from school a few days to get everything packed and moved over to All Might's as All Might's house is actually very big considering he has a lot of money since he was the best hero out there so he's definitely made a lot of bank and he's living pretty comfortably as Deku is being 
was seen to by a psychiatrist to fix all of the psychological damage that's inside of him but even though one memory has returned there's no telling what is going to happen when more of his memories come back but that's where i'm going to be leaving this off i hope you guys enjoyed i've been the crown fiend as always i'll catch all you guys later